Right now, we're gonna talk about one key finals week tip. And that one key finals week tip, I mean, it goes beyond this, but let's start with just finals week. It goes with understanding that sometimes a weakness is a weakness that you can improve on in the time you have allotted. And sometimes instead of focusing on a weakness or focusing on a weak area, you're much better off spending that energy in an area that's already a strength. And how it relates to finals week is that you may have four classes. Let's say one class you haven't paid attention at all the entire quarter, and now it's finals week, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get a D. I better spend all my time studying this class to improve that grade. But the truth is, right, if you have a D in the class, what are the odds that your final is going to be all of a sudden so amazing that you're going to get an A in that class, right? Not very good. So wouldn't it be better to write that class off and get the D or get the F and just retake it and instead maintain your A's in your other three classes? Because what sucks would be if you spend all your time on that, that class, getting that D up to C, and then next thing you know, your three A's have now turned into three B's, or worse, three B pluses, which is the worst grade you can ever get. That three three is a GPA killer, but that's not what you want to do. So focus your energy where it's most wisely used. All right, you only have a couple days, so don't just slack off on those classes. You're like, oh, okay, I've got to get my A. Make sure you keep those A's because that is more frustrating than anything. You can always retake D or an F, but you can't retake B plus, and those will kill your GPA. So we have a question, let's see. Oh, hello, quad life, hello. So uh, that's how it relates to finals week. Going more broadly, it kind of relates to life. I think a lot of times we can get stuck focusing on our weaknesses, and not really appreciating the strengths that we bring to the table and highlighting those, right? When you're in your undergrad, you may be uh, bad at a subject, right? And you spend all this time like, oh my gosh, I'm so bad at the subject and you avoid that subject and become so preoccupied with it that it doesn't allow you to thrive in other areas. Right? The other thing is that you may have a strength, and your strength may be that you have great ideas. Right? You're an ideas person, but you struggle with communicating your ideas to other people. And so you let that inability to communicate hold you back from getting your great ideas out there that could be really useful to the club you're in or to other people who need help. So don't get caught up again on those weaknesses. Focus on your strengths and then work on your weaknesses, but try to do whatever you can to bring those strengths out and get the most out of your strengths because you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck with your strengths. Um, when it comes time for your application, let's see a couple more comments here. All right, Quad Life. Well, again, hello. I'm glad you knew my broadcast. Do you have any questions about yourself? Uh, where are you located? Are you a pre-med student? If not, uh, what kind of student are you? And what questions do you have to? Um, so I was mentioning how that's important in your just general life, but then also on your application, right? So now is that time where people can put their application together and you have a couple months before your medical school application is due. It's not the time necessarily to focus on loss, cause, weaknesses. So GPA, for example, if your GPA, whatever your GPA is at this point, if you're applying in June, is what your GPA is going to be. There's no magic wand that you can wave that's going to increase your GPA in two months. So write that off as a loss cause and focus instead on the things you can change. And uh, if you've, I guess I put it out yet, but my video I'm going to put out pretty soon is on the six criteria, the six domains that medical schools assess you on. And one of those domains is academic ability and potential. And that area is defined into the MCAT and the GPA. So if your GPA is awful or it's not up to par, you're not going to prove it now. But what you can do to improve your academic potential and academic ability in medical school's eyes is to work on your MCAT. So it only takes a second to do one MCAT. Take a couple months, study for the MCAT, kill the MCAT, and then now that GPA that was bad, that was bringing you down, is now overlooked for that better MCAT. Right? So that's about putting your energy where it can be best utilized. So that's how it relates to that. Then when you get to your Apple actual application, when you're putting it together, you want to highlight yourself in the best light. So many students are focused on the one negative they have in their application that they spend a good chunk of their application or personal statement explaining away something bad. And now what you've done is they may not have realized that one F. They may not have realized that you have no uh, volunteering in your application. I'm sure, sure they would, but maybe they didn't. Now you've then taken your one opportunity to say how great you are to point out this huge glaring deficit you have and how they should overlook this <laughs> and not focus on it. But what you've just done is you've made them focus on it. You've pointed out, hey, I suck at this, look at this, but don't judge me for it, right? So why do this yourself? Instead, take the time back, use your personal statement, your application to highlight, man, I really thrive in these areas. If you let me into your medical school, you will see that I can bring this and enhance your medical school. 
Then what you do is you get to the interview, they're going to ask you about that F probably or why you have no volunteering. But at that point, you're already into the interview and now you've got an extended period of time where you can explain away why you have no volunteering. Well, I couldn't do volunteering because I'm broke and I had to work instead of volunteering. Right? That sounds much better in person. You can be sincere. You can explain your situation. Oh my gosh, I came in. I had no money. I had no scholarship. So I had to work three, three, five jobs. And I feel proud of myself for getting the grades I did and doing all the extra I did despite having five jobs. Right? Now you've sold yourself. Now you're impressive. But if you pointed out early on and you can't really get the full explanation, it's like texting, right? When we text people, it's awful to text things because you never know how it's interpreted by the other person. It's much better to make a phone call if it's something important to say. And it's the same way with your application. You don't have to get everything out on the paper. Instead, take the time and get it uh, on the actual application. Or, I mean, sorry, on the interview when you have time to explain it away in a heartfelt, sincere, easy to read what's happening and what kind of person you are in the interview. So that's what I would say. Let me see what these next questions are. Yeah, I, I appreciate that comment there, Quad Life. This is definitely. I think I tell my I tell people that I'm the pre-med productivity expert, but productivity goes across the board, right? If you're any kind of student, even if you're not a student, right? If you're a professional, who gets the raise? Who gets the promotion? It's people who are most productive, right? If you produce, if you're an earner, the company's gonna move you up the ladder. So the, a lot of the things that I talk about and preach are all things that will help you in whatever facet of school or life you're in, because everybody wants to be more productive. Because productivity is success and you feel good about it, right? When you have a good day and you do lots of good stuff, you feel good about it. So I appreciate you commenting that. And I, I would encourage people, even if you're not a pre-med, listen to my broadcast because I'm giving lots of great information for any person in any walk of life. If you want to be better, that's what I talk about.